Test. All right, sweet. Uh, we're waiting quite a while for this player to hit the accept button, so that's not a good sign. I'm going to throw stream announcements out regardless, though. We will presumably get a table fast enough. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, it looks like this player either hasn't accepted or we have a weird connection. No, they literally haven't accepted. Well, that's looking like I'm going to boot them then. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get somebody else pretty fast. Um... Anyhow, a feast for Odin has finally hit uh, Board Game Arena. Uh, it's hit beta. It's been an alpha for like three or four months. I've played a decent number of games, uh, and uh, the implementation is quite good. Uh, for those that don't know, a feast for Odin is kind of like a cross between Agricola and Patchwork in some ways. Uh, there's a bit of this kind of puzzly Tetris going on. There's a bit of engine building. There's a lot of action spaces. Give us the teach. Indeed, we're going to get there once we get in. We're going to explain some basic ideas of how this game works and some of the basics of the strategy. Uh, we were supposed to start, and then, yeah, we we lost, uh, we lost our... Well, by losing our fourth player, I mean, uh, fourth player didn't hit the accept button, but... I am going to try to hit the rules a lot. Yes, absolutely. Uh, once it pops up, I'm really going to talk through a lot of rules. Uh, that is the plan for this stream. The plan is to go through what the game's about, along with some level of strategy choices. I have no idea how good my opponents are going to be either, so like I might get away with a lot too. We'll see. Um, I've played over 100 games of A Feast for Odin. A lot of them are solo. But the solo game's actually really good. I could just, I guess, I could have actually just done the solo game, but I partly am trying to get some ELO. So, uh, hoping, uh, hoping somebody joins. Or I could just play a three-player. I mean, three-player is actually pretty good. Um, but as with most of my games, I kind of prefer four. I guess I'll ask these guys, like... See, see what they think. Um, it might be smarter to do three-player anyhow. Uh, people could be pretty slow in their first game, and that could be a little annoying. But you've played two to three times in person a few years ago. You thought it was super fun. The Tetro puzzle just took so long. Don't think you have the metal capacity to join. Yeah, that's fair. You're happy to see a three? Yeah. I don't really mind either way. I'm going to see what these guys say. Harden Bard says he doesn't mind waiting. Um... But uh, three players fine to him. Okay, we'll see what Infinity says. I'm probably okay with the three player too. It'll go a little faster. Um, three player is fine. How long does this take in real life? Um, it really does depend on how, like, right? As with a lot of games, it depends on how fast people are at actually taking their actions and just doing things. I would argue that it's about 40 minutes a player in real life but i've certainly been at some tables that are even slower than that i've been at a couple tables that are a bit faster than that to be fair like to be honest i probably play it at a pace of about 25 to 30 minutes for myself and i if i'm with other people at that rate that totally is fine but my guess is especially on bj it's going to take a while at first uh i'm just going to start the game here i'm waiting too long for a fourth so Took about 45 a player, the setup. Yeah, there's so much stuff, so setup and takedown can be a while. Um, and then decision-making. Yeah, I mean, some players are just kind of slow about making their decisions. Um, there are a lot of actions, and then, yeah, this puzzling portion can take people a long time, too. You get... Uh, once we're in here, I'll kind of explain. Um, there is a... Yeah... This is this is good. Um, okay, we are third seat here. That's fine. Um, 
how this game works is we play the game over the course of seven rounds. Each round, it's a worker placement game. We have so many workers, which are our Vikings, and we take actions. Unlike an Agricola, there is no family growth space. At the start of each new round, we just get another Viking. So you kind of family grow every round. Everybody does. Um, so that part's kind of cool. This is crowded looking. Uh, it is a bit crowded looking, but there's so much crap again, right, Derange? Like, how are you possibly going to, like, put this all on a table? There's the action board. There's your personal board. There's all the stuff you have. And then there's the exploration boards. There's all the special gray tiles you can earn. There's the ships you can buy. The mountain strips that you explore. Uh, these are the goods that you can earn. These are the sheds you earn. Uh... I don't even know what this is. Oh, that's just their... Oh, this is good to talk through what actually happens. That's cool. I'll do that in a sec. But, um... Anyhow, you get Vikings. At the start of every round, you get a new Viking. Uh, you have so many actions. The board looks crazy. This is our action board. This has 61 action spaces or something absurd. But the upshot is, you don't actually have to learn 61 action spaces, really. They're grouped in such a way that we have four columns and the kind of cool twist on this game is that column one takes one viking and you take an action column two you have to use two of your vikings to go take an action at that space column three you have to use three of your vikings to take that action space column four you have to use four of your vikings to take that action space so like this player put three other vikings and took this action um anyhow um the point is that the actions are kind of grouped in the same thing. So all of the actions in a row are kind of the same. Like this is building a shed. This builds a shed. This builds a shed. This builds sheds. This builds boats. This builds boats. This builds boats. This builds boats. So essentially the strength of the action increases the more Vikings you use, but it kind of does the same thing. So it's a lot easier to kind of learn what a lot of the actions do. Um... This player just took an action that gave them a bunch of wood. These actions are all kind of looped around mountains and trade. This largely all gets you building resources and upgrades tiles. Uh, I'm going to cover that in a sec because there's some crazy stuff. But I'm going to start by taking three wood and an ore. I think this is one of the better action spaces to start things out with, uh, especially in a four-player game. Uh, but yeah. Uh, do, do, do. The Canadian gets the starting player moose. Indeed, the starting player moose is very cool. Uh, you did terribly. The game's incredible. Blah, blah, blah. It's good. You liked it more than Agricola. Ooh, I cannot say that for sure, but you don't need defense in a feast for Odin, so wood is less important. Indeed. Um, building resources are not that important. What's actually important in this game are these goods tiles. There's all these different types of goods, uh, but again, it, there's kind of this color-coded system to them. Um, the orange is the worst, red is slightly better, green is better, blue is best. And the reason for this is it's a little contrived, but we're going to be putting goods on our boards, um, but there's restrictions. So like on our home board, oh, this is very small, but this little legend here on our home board is trying to show us that blue goods can be touching on our board. Green and blue goods can touch each other, but green goods cannot touch each other. So you can't have two green things directly touching on your home board. That's illegal. Uh, your home board can only take green and blue goods. Orange and red goods are not fancy enough to put into your house, clearly. Um, orange and red goods are uh, food goods. Typically, you'll need to eat them at the end of harvests. And same thing, you can't have oranges or reds directly touching at the end of harvests. Um, or, like, feasts. Feast is the word. Um, just, it's, it's a UE game, so you have to feed your workers. So at the end of every round, for all the open spaces on this banquet table, you have to feed your, uh, you have to use goods to feed. Now, the upshot is feeding is very easy in this game, because there are also these harvest rounds, and you just automatically get goods in this game on a lot of the rounds, and uh, so, yeah, your feeding is a lot easier because of this. Um... There are also occupations in this game. I have one occupation in my hand. I don't have it in play yet. I didn't even pay attention to what it was. Uh, it's actually a pretty good occupation. I should probably play it at some point. This occupation says every time I get at least two wood, I also get a silver. Silver is a very flexible good in this game. It's uh, yeah, just kind of tremendously useful. 
Um, all right. Uh, I am going to invest three of my Vikings into building a longship up here. It costs two wood, but boats are pretty important in this game. Um, so we have this big boat now in our harbor, which is useful. Also, whenever you use three Vikings at once, you get to draw an occupation. Every time you use four Vikings at once, you get to play an occupation. So that's uh, some of the benefits to using more Vikings at once. Uh, occupations are less impactful in this game than at Agricola, but they still can slightly impact or boost your strategy. Uh, anyhow, the reason that we need boats is that we need boats to take certain actions in this game. So now that I have a boat, I'm able to explore and actually go get certain exploration boards and start exploring these places. I'm also able to start raid and pillage in order to earn certain tiles with a long ship. Uh, there is also a whaling boat. Whaling boats let you start whaling, uh, which is a great source of earning tiles. Uh, and then there's this medium-sized boat called a NAR that's also pretty useful. But uh, Okay, what else have I done now? I've put myself in a position where I really want to get something to fill in this space, but I've invested a lot of actions already in other things. Uh, which is slightly awkward, I just realized. Uh, oh, wow, somebody also left this. Dang, this is hanging out. I didn't know that. Two silver's nice always, but um, okay. You like that you can't see other players' boards? Yeah, you, you can see other players' boards by clicking through them, right? So uh, we can look at what our opponents are doing, but I agree. You only need to peek at what your opponents are doing. It doesn't matter a lot. You wish the occupations were a bit stronger, Turambar? Oh, totally agreed. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think the game gets a little samey because you don't actually play into your cards that much. It doesn't really matter. Um, the occupations are kind of underwhelming. Yeah, most occupations are like about three or four points uh, of value, which doesn't matter much. Um, okay, uh, one of the things that happens at the end of every round, we earn income based on how full we've er filled up our board. I would kind of like to get two silver here, which means I need to somehow fill the board. So I think I'm going to try to get lucky, uh, which is not usually a good strategy, um, obviously. But God, that's not that's actually really not great chances. Yeah, I, I actually I kind of regret what I've done here slightly. I maybe shouldn't have gone for the long ship yet. Uh. Yeah, whatever. We're going to try to raid. So what happens with raiding is we get to roll the die, and then we were hoping to get... Uh, it's a d8, and we honestly are mostly hoping to get a 7, but we have to debate if we should just take a 6 and be happy enough. We we potentially should just be happy enough with this. You can roll up to 3 times. I really want to get an 8 so I can take this stupid helmet, but the odds of that are pretty poor. I think we're going to just... We're going to accept this six and be happy enough. The six lets us take this little guy, and that's honestly good enough for now. So now we can put goods on our board to earn income. So that is what I'm going to do here. I put this down, and now I've covered up the zero, so I'm going to earn one income. I'm debating if I want to put it this way or upright. I don't know if it matters much. Nah, it actually probably is upright. Um, this is my guess. Um, okay, so the way that this works, uh, I, which I haven't covered, is each round, the main thing that happens is we take actions. But before that, we get a Viking, we potentially harvest goods, some little thing happens that you don't care much about. We get a weapon card. There are many actions that you can use your weapon cards on. Then we take our actions. Whoever takes... Whoever places the last Viking becomes the start player for the next round, uh, which I think was just me. Yeah, I have the moose now, so that's cool. Um, then we earn income. The way income works is you cover your home board or any other board you have, and you start filling it up, and you earn income based on the uh, lowest number that's still visible. So if I wanted to earn like nine income, what you have to do is you have to cover up all the other incomes on this diagonal, um, but in order to cover it up, everything to the left and below of it has to be filled in. So if I want to cover up this seven, I have to fill in all of these spaces in order to do so. So you basically expand in these like ever larger squares on your home board in order to get more income. Um, 
At the end of the round here, we have to feast. So we need to pay orange and red goods or silver in order to feed our Vikings. I'm going to feast like this. Um, then the next phase is uh, bonuses. Uh, I'm not going to earn any bonuses here, but you see these weird symbols on our board. If we completely surround those symbols, we get a bonus good during this phase. So if I could have completely surrounded this little mead bonus, we get a bonus mead at the start of this phase, which would be nice. Um, bonuses and income, in my opinion, are the critical things to doing well in a Feast for Odin. My argument for how you win this game is essentially maximize income and bonuses. That's, that's kind of just the critical thing to understand, in my opinion. Um, All right, we hit a new round, we feast, we get a new Viking, we get all of our Vikings back, we get a bunch of goods, and we are start player. One of the things I want to do is I want to explore an exploration board. All of these boards provide you more area to fill in in addition to your home board. And uh, I'm going to just do generically good boring things this game. So... Nobody has a big boat yet, so nobody else can take the island I want. So we are going to load our ore up onto our boat, because that gives us a bonus when we pillage. And I'm going to go pillaging. Pillaging lets us roll the d12. We get an automatic plus one because of our ore. And uh, we were hoping to roll a pretty high number because we get to take any of these special tiles. But eight is fairly high. So the question is, do we re-roll and risk getting shafted, or do we accept that like a 9 here is pretty good? I'm going to go try to be luckier, but it's, this is dubious. Oh, but we get luckier. There we go, team. We call that a success. We take this big old 12 tile. Boom! Can't stop. Oh, we could have stopped, but we got greedy and we got rewarded. We got this big old tile. Gray tiles count as blue goods, so they can touch anything, which is very nice. This tile's going to be pretty good. We're going to take this Iceland board in a second, and this shape fits very nicely on Iceland here. We're going to put it right here, here, and on these spaces, and then we'll have to fill in this with like a silver or whatever leftover thing. We'll be earning nice income. We'll get a little bonus. Uh, but Iceland is one of the stronger exploration boards. It's worth a lot of points. It gives a lot of income. It has a couple of nice bonuses, and it's very easy to fill. Um, so that's going to be our next play. Buy an island? Oh, we are going to buy an island. Uh, what's that symbol along the diagonal? That's income deranged, right? So this island also provides income, uh, just like our home board. Uh, that's part of what makes Iceland so strong. We can earn up to eight silver a round. Silver is just directly points. In addition to it being points, you can use silver to fill in spaces. Uh, nobody can take Iceland from us yet, though, so we don't have to go fill it in yet. Uh, I think hunting's a pretty strong action in general. I'm tempted to just go hunting here. I have five Vikings left. Yeah, nobody else can take Iceland because they don't have the right type of boat. Oh, I also want to fill this in. Uh, so I need to earn some more tiles is what I need to do. Yeah, I'm going to try to hunt my way to those tiles. Uh, here, we also roll the dice, but we're trying to get low numbers. And uh, we really need very low numbers, so we're hoping to get very lucky. We do not get lucky, so we have to declare failure. We only get a wood and a bow for failing that. So in the future, we'll be better hunters because now we have more resources to succeed at hunting. But uh, that was that was not ideal. But uh, we got lucky on the other one, so whatever. Uh, our plan for this round includes exploring Iceland. So we're just going to go explore. Whoa, 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 wait. Undo. Whoa, 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 what happened there? Did somebody snag Iceland on me without paying attention? Or am I... Oh, wait, does Iceland only cost two Vikings? Iceland only cost two Vikings. Oh, there, that's right. Iceland only cost two Vikings. I went to the wrong space. Oh, I have an extra Viking. Uh, okay, well, that's helpful. That's very helpful. Um, I, I thought Iceland cost three Vikings for some reason, but that's just my silly head thinking that it's... Uh, 
Very good. Uh, Infinity would appreciate if we moved fast. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, I guess I can try to go slightly faster for him. Anyhow, we now have an exploration board to fill in. Uh, again, this thing we can rotate and put right here. But again, we have to cover up this space in order to be allowed to cover up that income. So that's going to be a thing we'll have to figure out. Um, but we can do that with the silver. What's the strips looking like? They're awful. Uh, oh, I have an extra wood, though. Uh, so this space is pretty good here. This is what we're going to do. We have, two, we have two guys left. We spend a wood, and we get uh, this small like two-by-two two chest and a silver. Um, this will this will do a lot of what we want to do. Um, this will this will get our game going nicely. Uh, so yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that chest on our home board and unlock two income. We're gonna put this big old thing right there and use a silver to complete it. And so now we're gonna be getting three plus two. We're gonna get five silver at the end of this round. We're gonna get a little oil. And uh, yeah, we're we're well positioned to keep doing things. We're gonna save putting those items down. Uh, and yeah, we're chugging along just fine. Um, our opponents probably don't really know what they're doing yet. Uh, to be honest, it's hard it's hard enough following my game, obviously. So I'm peeking at theirs, but they really uh, they are I think very new players, which is understandable. They're running into a player that actually knows what they're doing, which. It's going to be a slight problem. Uh, our goal for round three at this point is going to be just fill Iceland. We're going to try to completely fill in Iceland in round three. Um, to do that, we're probably going to pillage some more. We've already put an ore on our boat, so pillaging some more big tiles will be nice. Uh, we have some decent resources to try to hunt or snare our way to tiles. Uh, in my opinion, some of the better ways to earn tiles in this game are yeah, using the die rolling actions. So we either raid or pillage. Or we do stuff like hunting, snaring. Whaling is also very good. I just don't have a whaling boat yet. So later, we're going to get some whaling boats. But could I have spent stuff to improve my hunting score? You can, but ghostly. When I went hunting, I had one bow and one wood. And in order to succeed at hunting, you have to get a zero value. I rolled like 868. Eight, so I was doomed regardless of what I had. Or no, I rolled a three. Sorry, I rolled a three. But the three was not good enough because I only had two goods. That's why it was a risky hunting action. I had to roll a one or a two. But to be fair, rolling a one or a two on a D8 when you have three times, that's like a, I think it is like a 57% chance, right? I mean, let's go check. Let's go check what my odds were on that. I should really know these things if I'm going to play a Feast for Odin a bunch. Uh, our chance of failure is three-fourths failure to the third. So our chance of failure was, yeah, 42%. So our chance to succeed was about 57, 58%. So I was right. I, I had a decent chance of succeeding there, and I just didn't. I think that was a fine enough gamble to take. Uh, now we need to feast. I don't have enough stuff to feast on, so I'm going to have to use a silver to space things out here. Uh, so that's slightly sad. It's a little inefficient to be eating silver, but... It's not a big deal. We shouldn't worry about it too much. We're gonna earn a ton of, we're gonna earn a ton of silver this game, um, so. Uh, when you take an exploration board, it comes with a lot of negatives on it, and our home board has all these negatives too. That's why our score is so far negative right now. Uh, we are currently at a negative seventy nine. Um, like, Hardened Bard here is at negative 102, because uh, I think they did not feast. Yeah, they took 7th. Okay, the we're, we're playing with people that really don't know the rules. Hardened Bard did not feed correctly, and so they took 7 beggar tokens. And, like, just like Agricola, every open space you leave, you take a beggar. Uh, they just took uh, negative 21 points. Uh, that's obviously very game-losing if we were, you know, that you can't do that. Um, we have so many negative points, though, because we have a lot to fill in, but uh, this is a very weird game, having live scoring, because, yeah, like, scores, a winning score is going to be, like, 130 to 140 at a table of, like, really strong players, probably. Um, so, even though it looks like I have tons of negatives, and it's always scary taking more boards because you have more stuff to chew off, it's often correct to do so. Um... But yeah, our goal in round three is to mostly fill in or entirely fill in Iceland. So we need to get a lot of goods to fill in this board. 
Uh, so that's going to be our focus. We're going to use all of our Vikings to try to earn a bunch of tiles and slam them onto Iceland. Um, we don't have a lot of food here, uh, so that's actually slightly awkward. I probably fed slightly incorrectly, because the other awkward thing about feasting is you can't eat the same goods uh, efficiently. If you use two of the same goods, one of them has to be eaten in the inefficient uh, way, so that's obviously awkward. That I think the rule claims that Vikings need a diversity of stuff in order to feed well or whatever, but yeah, it's, regardless, it does not bode well for us. Uh, we really want to succeed at hunting, and we also really want to pillage. Uh, nobody else can pillage yet because they don't have the right boat, so we're going to go hunting, and we're going to try to actually succeed this time. We roll a one, mega success, excellent. Hunting gives us this cool little tile, and then this red good. But the good thing about red goods that are large, decent sized, is that it takes one upgrade action in order to turn them into green. So we can go to one of these upgrade action spaces later and turn this green, and then we can actually put it onto our board. So that'll help us a lot. Uh, we're going to still pillage some tile here soon, too, to help fill our board. We're going to have to upgrade. So that's that's a couple of our Vikings. Uh, our other Vikings laying a snare would be very good still. We have two snares and a wood. So, I mean, we'd have to roll a three or less. Rolling a three or less on an action is going to be like an 80% chance of success, I'm guessing, right? Five ace to the third is our chance to fail. Oh, okay. A chance to succeed would only be 76%, so not great, but not not that bad. It's probably still worth trying. The other cool thing about when you snare, if you fail snaring, you can see what the board is trying to show you here. If you succeed, you get a snare and a big tile. If you fail, you get the stuff on the left. You get a snare back, a wood back, and a viking back. So failing isn't that punitive, um, which is kind of one of the nice things in this game. Even though there's die rolling actions, failing them is usually not that bad. It's still bad. Like, it definitely matters because it's an engine building game. Failing early compared to getting resources is tough. But you get some compensation at least. It's not, it's not horrible. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I think my next action is going to be snare. I use two Vikings to snare, two Vikings to pillage, maybe a Viking to raid, and then a Viking to do some upgrade action. Um, I'm probably going to have to spend a decent amount of silver on the feast this phase, but as I argued, even though that's kind of inefficient, I think it's even more inefficient to try to take crummy food actions just to avoid spending silver. Uh, we roll a two right away because we're now a rolling lucky, so we spend our two snares, we succeed... We're gathering a lot of tiles in order to put onto Iceland, which was exactly our goal this phase. Uh, our game's looking very good at the moment. Um, I would argue what I'm pulling off this game is essentially the mainline, like, default best strategy in a Feast for Odin. You build a longship, you do a lot of raiding and pillaging, you take Iceland. Um, that's that's kind of probably just default the best stuff you can be doing in the game. There's certainly a lot of other cool things you can do, and I'm hoping in future streams I'm going to show off lots of different play styles. But I suspect some people are going to get pretty sick of watching people win the game via raiding and pillaging, via whaling, and via taking, like, Iceland. Um, that's my guess. I think it's the easiest strategy to, like, pilot to a win, and it's pretty strong. So I think you're going to see a lot of that. At beginning tables, the other thing you're going to see a lot of that we actually haven't seen at all yet, because uh, I don't do it early, but another good way to just get a solid score is an action called emigration, which I'll cover in a sec. I need to worry about what I'm doing first. Somebody took the upgrade action spot I wanted, so that's why I'm worried about what I'm up to, but I'm still okay. There's still one here, one here that I'll, I'll survive with, uh, although I really should take them now. Yeah, I might be should just upgrade now. But slight overkill is the downside, but if I don't get upgrade here, I'm kind of doomed. So I think we got to upgrade. So we get to upgrade three tiles. They have to be different. So we're going to upgrade this to green, and then we're going to upgrade our biggest things to blue, just because it'll make 
It'll make puzzling things that much easier. We could have upgraded one of our orange goods to red in order to feed more efficiently. But again, as I've kind of tried to argue and continue to try to hammer, I think worrying too much about feeding efficiency is a bad strategy. I think you just eat the silver and it's more efficient than trying to take crummy actions otherwise. Uh, okay, looping back to the other like good strategy that people are going to see that's going to win. One of the things you can do in this game is emigrate. That's what these yellow spaces are. What you do is that you pay silver equal to the current round and you get to flip your ship. So you have to have one of the big ships and you flip them and it covers up two it covers up one of these big spaces on your feast board. It reduces how much you feast um, by in the future and it gives you a ton of points. Uh, the back side of this boat is worth 21 points. The back side of Nars are worth 18. So some players are going to probably early game find out that a kind of other like easy strategy to pilot is just build boats every round and emigrate them every round. You'll wind up with a lot of points uh, doing that, but not enough to compete against very strong players is my general finding. Uh, we're going to pillage again. We are not going to accept a three. We need better than that. We're not accepting a two and we're not accepting a four. So we did get punished here pretty hard. We have to declare failure. Um, that is going to slow us down a lot. And so that is where like the die rolls do suck. I didn't even need super high die rolls there. I just needed it to be like a 7 or an 8 uh, on a D12. And instead we got 3, 4, 5. So that was, this is like where that's actually going to cost me like a, quite a few points overall this game compared to where I should have just been. So that's pretty annoying. Like that's where the die luck can get rough. Um because I, I should be a lot better off than I am now. But, oh well. Again, our game's going well enough. Now we're going to go back to raiding. It's a D8. It's harder to raid well. You don't get to use your ore on raiding, but we're hoping to roll high. There's an 8. Okay, I was about to really complain. But we can spend our sword and get this 9 here. This is a lot of spaces for 9. We could spend our stone here and get a 10 size object. But the nine's going to do well enough for us here, I think. So we'll we'll declare a success there. Uh, you haven't played this in a couple of years. You played it like 10 times when it came out. It did feel it was lacking in replayability. You get whaling or raiding ship. Use that every round. You do one or two other main strats. Not that much variation. Kind of related to Ox Week. Fun to play some games. Yep, I think that's a very fair summary. Um... I've played this quite a bit solo. I think it's an interesting solo game, and you kind of block yourself, and there is some other stuff you can purposely choose to push, but I agree that the mainline strats uh, can kind of be this way. This is also why I prefer four-player. Four-player, the board gets messier, and you have to actually find some other things to do sometimes, too, but uh, here, here my opponents are just letting me kind of take all the actions I want every round. Uh, here, we need to keep getting tiles. We're going to spend our stone in order to get uh, some more coverage, uh, which will hopefully pay off. And uh, now we need to puzzle our stuff onto our board. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to try to do this efficiently, but obviously I'm not sure I'm laying stuff down in the most efficient of manners. Um... One, two, three, four, f I have, whoa, I don't actually have to cover these holes yet. So one, two, three, four silver. Oh, I have enough silver. Okay. Well, we still succeeded this round. We wanted to mostly fill in this board. Uh, and hey, guess what? We're going to be up to seven income on Iceland and all the bonuses. And my dog is going to try to make our talking harder. That's lovely. All right. Uh, yeah. Save and done. Uh, so yeah, we just got a ton of income now. Life is looking great. Our feast is ugly. We're spending a lot of our silver to feast here. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, this... Oh, that actually was taken. Okay. Uh, we, we do spend three of our silver to feast here, but that's okay. Things things are things are great. Um, our, game's, our game, yeah, is very good. We, we have Iceland mostly filled at the end of round three. Um... We're about to get a bonus fish, a bonus stone in an ore, a bonus, yeah, little oil barrel. Uh, 
the other thing that's going to be really nice here is uh, these exploration boards. Uh, Faro is about to flip into Baffin. These islands flip if nobody takes them. And the backside of Faro is an island called Baffin that I think is very good. Uh, we are going to take Baffin Island this round. We're going to chew off another exploration board and try to fill it rapidly. Um, that's, again, maximizing income and bonuses is kind of how I think you win this game. And so even though we could focus on our home board and all these negatives we have, there's a lot of time still. There's a lot of time in the future. We're going to aggressively expand and uh, try to prove that that's winning. Sorry, applied to a text there. Baffin Island, nice. I'm going to make it to Canada. Yeah, I'm going to make it to Canada. All right, let's check quick. Do our opponents have a way to take Baffin Island? No, you need the biggest thing. Nobody can take the stuff we want still. We have a ton of spears here, which is what you need to whale with, but we don't have a whaling boat. How do we solve that? Well, one of the other benefits to having a lot of income is you can buy boats instead of building them. So we're going to buy ourselves a whaling boat, Oh, look at that. We have a whaling boat, and we're going to go whaling here. Um, it's pretty sweet. Uh, we can load our ore up on our whaling boat, which is going to boost our chances of success. So we're also going to do that. And now we're going to whale. We need to get low numbers when we're whaling. That is not a low number. Four is low enough. We get an automatic minus two because of the ore printed on our boats. We spend two spears, and we have slaughtered a whale. We get this awesome whale meat, which we can upgrade to green. We get some other stuff. Uh, our three of our Vikings are going to be taking Baffin Island. Uh, another of our Vikings is going to have to be upgrade. And then our other Viking might be like pillage again. And we'll hopefully be able to fill in Baffin Island. I do have the moose again. I took the most actions last round. I get the moose. You had to duck out, but let's go Vikings. Yeah, I mean, the only thing is I can't... As a Green Bay Packers fan, saying let's go Vikings is a little tough. I, I, I can't quite join you on that. Um, can't, can't quite get there. Um, uh, but yeah, we do. This is an awesome whale bait. Look at that tile. You, you just know that we're winning when we have a tile like that. Uh, okay. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this two upgrade action. We really need it. We're going to turn our whale meat green. We're going to turn this tile blue just to make it easier to puzzle things in. Uh, so that's going to help us later. Uh, our remaining round, we really want to spend three Vikings to take this Baffin Island. Uh, Baffin right here looks like this. It has quite a bit of nice income if you fill in this area. And the other thing that's really awesome about Baffin is it has great bonuses. Uh, you know what we just got when we succeeded whaling? We got a whale meat, an oil, and a skin and bones. Baffin Island, if you fill this in, it's like you get free whaling actions every round. This is part of why I think exploration boards and like this strat is the strongest in a Feast for Odin. If you maximize your income and bonuses, even though it looks like it's really hard for me right now to keep taking more boards and filling everything in, when you fill in exploration boards, you get so many goods back from filling them in that they kind of pay for themselves. Whatever I'm going to invest in Baffin Island here to fill it in, I'm going to get a bunch of income and a bunch of like really good space filling tiles for filling it in. So that's how I'm actually going to net uh, a lot of benefit. Uh, I'm talking too much while my opponents are doing things. Uh, nobody's built the boat yet to actually do the thing. So I'm going to go ahead and try to pillage again. Uh, a nine pillage, we could spend our stone, make that a 10 pillage and take like this tile. I think that's good enough. Um, I could get greedier here, but I don't think it's the correct time to get greedy. I think it's the correct time to just take a really good tile, uh, make sure that we fill in some space. Uh, congrats, Green Bay. Thank you. Yes, congrats to Green Bay Packers indeed. Um, the Green Bay Packers have locked up the number one seed. They look very good this year. 
Uh, but yes, I, I just can't quite say let's go Vikings. That's it's it's just it's an inherent thing growing up in Wisconsin. I just I can't do it. Uh, I can't join that sentiment. Uh, but anyhow, uh, Feast for Odin is on BGA. Again, it's actually been on BGA for a while, but it's finally in beta, which means I will finally stream it. Uh, I I don't like streaming games that are in alpha because only certain people can do it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, anyhow, we're about to explore Baffin. Oh, somebody did explore an island, though. What did they take? They took Greenland. That's fine. I don't... I. It's a little sad. I was hoping nobody would take Greenland this game, because then Greenland flips to be a really awesome board. Uh, and I was going to get greedy and take another board. But uh, that's okay. Uh, we're going to take Baffin Island here. Thank you. Hello, Baffin. Uh, we've been drawing some occupations, but as you noticed, one of the lame things about our game is I haven't played a single occupation yet. Um, but I just, even though I have some decent ones, it's just, they're just not that important compared to the other things I'm doing. Uh, we can already puzzle ahead here, so we need to just make sure that we fit all of our goods on our board. Um, we have a bit of silver to play around with, at least. Uh... But actually, yeah, this is slightly awkward, huh? Oh, weird. Um, I'm saying weird because this big tile I earned is actually doesn't fit on Baffin particularly well. Yeah. I kind of know some of the combinations that work well in this game. And uh, this apparently is not one of them. Uh, awkward. Awkward. Uh, okay. Um, well, let's just throw that away for a sec. Can we get by without it? We just do this and this. Or this. No, we really need that tile somehow. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, apparently... Apparently it works, but it was not quite what we wanted. But it does work. We have enough silver to make this go. Uh, all right, we'll save that. It's good enough. I'm not sure that was our best thing, but uh, we get our six income. One of the fun things, uh, or one of the other tricks of this game that we're about to exploit is that we get an income phase, then the bonus phase. So the income that we are about to earn, we're going to invest a ton of our income that we're about to earn into unlocking all of these bonuses. Um, you might think, Ryan, why are you spending all of your income? Isn't that points? Why would you do that? But... Uh, Again, the answer is our entire strategy is essentially maximize income and bonuses, and I swear to you, it will pay off. Um, so, uh, really, we we we're about to earn we're about to earn fifteen income in round four. Uh, that's pretty zany, to be honest. And then, yeah, we're just gonna dump a bunch of that income onto our board, but it's buying us so many goods that it's gonna be worth it. Um, so yeah, we, you will notice I haven't quite finished Iceland over here. There's one more income I could earn on Iceland. I'll eventually get there, but it's, it's not the priority compared to unlocking this, these free goods. These goods are so important that paying for them is going to be worth it. Income equals silver. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I currently have seven income on Iceland, two income on my home board and six income on Baffin. So I'm going to earn 15 silver. Indeed, I did just earn 15 silver. Uh, and then we need to feast. Uh, so we're going to feast on these guys. And then we're about to dump a lot of our silver into earning these goods. But for example, I'm spending two silver here to get a six space green tile. Like that's just obviously good. Spending four silver to get a whale meat is very good. Like, again, all of these things are just giving me more stuff. More stuff's going to let me do more overall things. Uh, 
yeah, it would be nice to have a bit more income t or a bit more silver to just hoard it for points, but uh, getting all these bonuses is going to be very good for us. So you can feast that way where the rules ever change. You seem to remember something about having to place foods vertically. Big econ. This, yes, EJ, that's what we're doing. We're doing big econ. Uh, we're doing the big econ of, of Feast for Odin. Uh, you can feast that way. You absolutely can feast that way. Uh, the restriction for feasting is if you eat the same good, one of them has to go vertic vertical. So if I tried to eat both of these flax, like if I tried to eat both of these flax sub-harvest, one of the flax would have to go inefficiently. Wow, that's what it's showing. See, I'm trying to eat both of these flax efficiently, but it's against the rules, so it's showing up red. I have to eat one of them inefficiently. Um, if you were eating two of the same goods, but just having a, you just eat a mixture of goods and you're fine. As long as you're not eating repeat stuff, you're okay. Uh, I think the rule book, again, the thematic justification is the Vikings needed a balanced diet. And then there's some joke in there too about beans because beans doesn't have an inefficient way. You can eat as many beans as you want. And, uh, Yui Rosenberg made Bonanza and has this weird little bean thing associated with him. So yeah, there's a small little joke there about how you can eat as many beans as you want. But the joke is Germans want diversified economic engines. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed, that's the joke. Uh, okay, what are we doing this round, by the way, team? Uh, whaling, again, is very good for us. Uh, I'd be very happy to whale and just get a bunch more tiles. Uh, tried to, like... I think we're about to just try to fill our home board. We could get greedy and try to fill another exploration board and then our home board. But, I mean, George wanted me to go to Bear Island. I could still take Bear Island, but I think it's a stretch. I think just going for the home board this round is going to be good. So we're going to go whaling again. Uh, we have a bunch of... Uh, we got a bunch of bonuses for whaling. Although... Oh, I was going to say, it looks like we're going to fail, but we rolled a two right at the end. Success. Look at us. Excellent whalers. We have so many goods. How very German. Vikings game. We must feed Loki. How do you have only 1,600 coins? I, I don't know. Probably because you fed too much Loki. You fed Loki too many times in the past. You watch VODs too much instead of live. I don't know. Uh, Loki, you're sleeping on the job. I mean, he's laying in the sun. I don't know if that was visible in the, behind me, but the sun streams in at certain times of day, and he loves just sitting in the sun, being a sleepy dog, and that's apparently what he was doing, but he's he's on the draw now for the treat. Yeah, all right, buddy, sit. Stay. Okay. Yeah, you're such a good boy. Yeah, the viewers viewers are watching out for you. Loki, the Viking god of board games, indeed. Thank you, George Shortwell. Thanks, EJ. Loki, thanks all of you, too. All right, what do we got next? Uh, we would like to pillage again, because nobody is stopping us from just pillaging every round, and uh, we're not going to turn down pillaging again. Oh, I need to do a lot of upgrading. Um, having all of these goods is slightly... Yeah, I need to make these guys green, uh, so I probably just take the double upgrade here. Uh, yeah, yeah, double, double upgrade actually probably looks like the next best action. D do this double upgrade thing, turn these green so that I can actually place them. Now, I am starting to run into an issue where I have a lot of green tiles, right? And green can't touch green on boards. So, one of the things that you can do in this game is that, uh, that I haven't done yet is, but you can upgrade any number of dissimilar green goods, um... For one silver, you also have to have a gnar. Now, I don't have a gnar yet, but I can buy one. But this is where I don't have enough income. Uh, so yeah, fitting everything on the board this round could be a little tricky. But we're going to try to explode our home board up to like six income this round. Uh, is, I think, the goal here. Yeah, I think I think our goal is to explode our home board income. Uh, so I still should pillage, though. Yeah, I, I, I should pillage. Uh, how hard am I chasing the bonuses on the home board? Uh, not super hard. So I am okay covering up some of these things on the home board, but I'm going to try not to. I would prefer to get them uh, just because, again, maximize income and bonuses. That's our whole mantra around here currently. Uh, but we're going to pillage again. Before we pillage, we're actually going to load another ore onto our boat 
giving us further bonuses on this roll. Uh, we're up to a 13. This crown is worth two points, but we can't get it yet. But this thing is worth 13, and we absolutely are going to take that. It's a huge tile, an excellent space filler. Uh, and counts, and again, most importantly, it counts as blue. So you can like slam that in there. That's actually probably not going to work, but maybe, maybe it works. And with a bit of silver, it works pretty well, right? We can do something like this with all of this. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. And then if we could upgrade this thing into blue, if this was just blue, we slam that here. Oh, wait, these are touching as well. Oh, wait, no, this could be green if just this one was blue. And then if this is blue, uh, we could actually put this guy here. And then we would owe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven space fill currently with just having this blue and we have four Vikings. That seems, that seems totally doable. And then we get all the bonuses also. I say, yeah, let's do that. That's that's what I say. Let's do that. Uh, that does mean we need to get at least one of these blue, uh, which is actually a slight problem because I wanted to use this action, but this action got taken. So now I have to do an action I don't necessarily want. But this action could be acceptable. I haven't taken a lot of goods off boards yet, but I could take these three goods. Um, could take these three goods, upgrade this to blue. Every ore can also be used like silver on your boards. Ores can just fill in single spaces, so it's not bad. Uh, also, I do have this option to just raid again, though. I might just raid again here first. Because I can always do a triple upgrade and not care much. Yeah, let's just raid again. And we'll see if we get lucky. Uh, we finally get pretty unlucky on raiding, but that's okay. Uh, I'm the only one with Vikings left. Oh, well, that was cool. Apparently nobody could have stopped me anyhow. Sure. We take all of this. We make this one blue. Apparently that's enough based on my earlier math in. And we got one Viking left. What do we need? Uh, we could finally do this, but I'm not super thrilled about that, actually. Uh, we're going to buy two fish, and we're going to buy two fish for reasons that will become clear later. Uh, but it's what we're doing. Oh, but we spent our silver. Uh, that might be mildly a mistake, but whatever. We're going to rush our stuff back out in our cool arrangement that we had. Uh, hoping we can remember said arrangements. And hoping that we kept enough silver in reserve. I'm not sure that I kept enough silver in reserve. Uh, but maybe. I did not keep enough, but I have ore. Again, you can spend ore like silver to fill in boards. Boom. We did it, team. We did it. Uh, there we go. Uh, so we're up to seven goods on our home board. That looks good. Or seven income on our home board. Um, but yeah. Uh, hey, Heroic Logic. Oh, we're feeding Loki another one. Uh, okay, we'll do that in a sec. He went right back to being a sun dog. But I'm sure he'll come back. Um, uh, we can prepare our feast ahead of time. We're feasting on this and this and this. And uh, apparently we're feasting on two silver once we get it. That's slightly awkward, but that's okay. I mean, we are up to... We're up to 20 silver income. Uh, 20 income at the end of round 5 is pretty nutty. Uh, it's going to do a lot for us. Oh, we also have this oil barrel. This oil barrel is going here. We'll pay the 2 silver to unlock this ore bonus, because again, maximize income and bonuses is our game plan. Uh... Do we get income after round seven? Yeah, you do. So uh, the final round ends at this point. You don't get bonuses and stuff, but uh, you have a final income phase and a final feast. So we will get income at the end of the game. So, I mean, that's part of where our high score, like our score is going to come from. We're going to get an insane number of points uh, from income just being points uh, right at the end also. Um so yeah, 
Uh, we got our income here too. We're dropping it down here. It's covering up Baffin Island stuff. Uh, I think that's all the bonuses we can earn. Yeah, it is. That's good. All right. Your first Loki treat. Wow, Heroic Logic. Welcome. Well then, Loki, you have a new friend. Yeah, I mean, he's actually always been your friend, but you have a new benefactor, I guess we could say. Uh, we are done with that. Uh, all right. Hi, bud. Can you come a little closer? Come on, come on. Get in the camera a bit more. Yeah. You're such a good boy. Yeah. All right, this is from Heroic Logic. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Uh, we have the first action this round. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to finally take this action. It's one of the better actions in the game. Uh, you get to build a boat and a house. So we're going to finally build a house and talk about that. And we also get to play an occupation. And uh, we're going to do this dumb one, even though it's probably not actually doing anything for us. It's worth three points. And three points is good enough for us. We got to play an occupation because we used four Vikings. Um, anyhow, what we just did is we built a Gnar, but more importantly, we built this longhouse. This longhouse has a lot of negatives on it, but houses can hold orange and red goods for points. So we're going to turn some of our orange and red goods into this board in order to uh, get some you know, get some good points, uh, knocking out some of these negatives. And we can even earn a couple of small bonuses, potentially, too. Uh, really, we're doing this because we are starting to run out of things to do. Uh, we have a lot of our home board to fill, but we have a lot of Vikings. We have a whole other round after this, and uh, we're going to run out of things to do. So we need to keep chewing off more things to do. Because currently we don't, uh, yeah, we're gonna run out otherwise. So we're we're trying to f we're trying to find good things to do, uh, and this is looping back to why I bought those fish last round. Fish fit in houses very nicely. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of ways to kind of turn fish into two points into a house, and so we we decided we we're gonna go for some log houses. It would need some fish. Uh, whaling is getting taken here. That's fine. I don't really want to whale again. Uh, what I actually am going to do is I'm going to finally emigrate as well. Going to try to keep... We're trying to keep this stream a little bit of learning all the games, so we're going to finally emigrate. In order to emigrate, you have to pick one of your big boats. We don't want to pick this boat because we have it loaded up with ore, so we're going to pick this boat to emigrate, and we have to pay silver equal to the round number. So we spent six silver in order to flip this, but it went from 5 points to 18. I mean, we did spend 6 silver, so it really was a 7-point action. But it also saves us a bit of food. And we still need a lot of food, uh, especially because we're putting food into our house. So it's, I think I think emigrating here, too, is a good way to keep going. Uh, you think I got my metaphors mixed? We want to bite off more so that we can chew it? Yeah, I'm probably am. I'm saying a lot, so whatever. Uh, any green-blue blocks are just disgustingly good in the endgame. I don't know necessarily what that means, but unless that's considered a bonus. Any green blue blocks? Oh, yeah, no, the green. So any bonuses like this are thrown away. Like, we're not. These are bonus goods. We're not getting. Like, we're not. These bonus goods, the last time they're going to pay out are this round in round six. Uh, there is no bonus good payout in round uh, seven because the game's ending. Um, but, like,. Basically, when we filled in Baffin Island, we got, from Baffin Island, we got 24 silver this game, and we got three whale meats, three skin and bones, three oils, two ore. That's what we got from Baffin, plus the 12 points on Baffin. Now, we had to spend a lot of tiles in order to cover it, but Baffin Island has given us even more in return. So, uh, it ends before bonuses are awarded. Yeah, it does. Is this a good implementation? I think it's quite a good implementation, actually. Yeah, I mean, I've been in Alpha and I've been giving them some suggestions, but it's pretty good. Most of what you need to see is pretty visible. Being able to cycle between players' boards is the greatest thing they did. Um, you don't really need to see what players' boards look like, mostly. Uh, and so not having them all on screen at once is great. And being able to like drop into these menus to see other things, I think, is also quite nice. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, there are still exploration boards left, but because there's like only one bonus phase left and only two income phases left, a lot of boards become not that good to take toward the end. Uh, they do build up a lot of silver. So like admittedly, Terra del Fugo Fuego here 
Uh, it might have been reasonable for me to take this. It might still be reasonable for me to take it. It only has 20 negatives on it, and it's worth 15 points on its own. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 silver on it. So, and it automatically comes with two income. So, it actually is worth 25 points to me, even if I do nothing and I only spend 20 points. So, it's three vi- This is- I, I actually might take another board. We're still getting those negative points printed on the Explored Islands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still get the negative points. So, that's where- Taking a board at this stage is a little rust. Like, unless I can cover up all these negatives, I'm going to lose it. But I can cover a lot of these negatives. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily unlock the bonuses or much more income. But I, I might take that board here. Is it insanity to take that board? Uh, kind of. It certainly means that I'm leaving myself a hell of a lot to do. But uh, hey, let's. what have we shied away from giving ourselves a hell of a lot to do? Let's do it, team. Let's take another board. Let's go crazy. Boom. All right. Uh, so we have another exploration board now. Um, again, I'm not really trying to get income off of it. Uh, I mostly took it because it had a ton of silver based on it. And then I can cover a couple of negatives here, too, to score points in the final round. But we're not going to completely fill this one. Um, we want to, we want to like completely fill our home board next round, so that's definitely part of our priority. We're gonna finally pillage again at the end of this round, by the way, because again, nobody's actually stopping us from pillaging every round, which is probably their biggest tactical mistake this game. Uh, these opponents not stopping me from pillaging every round is a lot of why I'm winning. Uh, pillaging is very efficient. Um, Wailing is pretty efficient, too. Um, I've just been able to do a lot of very efficient actions repeatedly. I've gotten very good exploration boards. Iceland and Baffin are some of the best exploration boards in the game, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, we're, 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 we're rolling very well. Um, I'm guessing that we're going to score like a 140 to a 150 this game, uh, which yeah, is, is very good. Uh, okay, sorry. As always, got distracted. What am I doing? I'm pillaging. Uh, let's load up our pillaging boat to max. We're going to try to get that dang crown still with a good roll. Come on, crown! Uh, hey, you know what we need in order to get that crown? The crown costs 16. This uh, gets us to 14, 15, 16, and we get to take a big old crown. The crown is a huge space filler, and it's worth two points. It's going to help us fill up our It'll help us fill up our home board next round. We're not making home board progress this round. Uh, one of the other things that I think is a slight mistake players will start making in this game is that in round six, if you like mostly fill your home board by the end of round six, you can leave yourself like almost nothing to do in round seven. Like you would have like almost no efficient actions left. So we're gonna we're we'll just fill in our home board like in round seven by taking actions th uh, that help us fill it up right at the end. Uh, so all I'm really gonna do this round is I'm going to mess around a little with uh, Terra del Fuego here. Uh, I am gonna put this tile down. This is gonna get us up to two income. So I'm I'm playing this tile. And essentially, I'm turning this tile into two points because we're going to get income paid out this round and right at the end of the game. And every income is a point. Uh, but after this, I don't think I'm going to even go for any income or bonuses on this board. Uh, maybe I go for this bonus yet. We'll see. But probably I'm just doing that. Um, oh, I could also unlock the rest of Iceland here. Uh, that's probably worth finally doing. Um Unlocking Iceland, yeah, involves just paying some silver to finish it off. Uh, but all of the spots that we're covering up for the most part had negatives on them anyhow. So uh, I think this is essentially just netting points for us also. Um, 
Yeah, that seems fine. We'll do that. Yeah, and we'll fill up our home board. Uh, the other thing we're trying to do is we are trying to fill our log house up a little bit at least. Uh, you can put silver into the log houses too. I don't think you should do it too much, but... We're going to get a couple of bonus goods off of our log house. Should help things out in the future. Uh, I'm not going to worry about trying to get this beans bonus. There's a decent chance that I'm just going to slam this guy in here next round. Uh, that's actually probably what's going to happen. I might yet go for another log house next round, depending on how things look. We'll see. Um... Pea flower baker, I can place up to two peas in the harvest. Well, that's fun. That might be useful in the final. Uh, am I filling my boards for any more income? I am not. We're getting an insane amount of income here, though, which is great. Uh, truly spoken like a player who only makes towns in round six. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that is true. Much like my Terra Mystica strategy, my uh, Feast for Odin strategy is also uh, apparently, yeah, just, just delay. Just delay doing things until the end. Nah, I mean, again, even though it looks like I'm at zero points here, I'm about to earn, like, 20 points of income, and I have an insane number of points I earn in the final round by just filling stuff up. Um, I'm about to get tons of bonus goods again in order to fill the home board. My final round is essentially fill the home board. I might take this action again, uh, although I would need more one more wood to do it, but I might build another log house, another gnar, if I have... If I think I have the time for it, because, like, I actually think I have enough leftover stuff. I probably can get away with mostly filling in another log house. Um, but maybe yeah, I probably don't. Have, I probably don't have time for another log house. It's probably more effective to make sure I completely fill my home board and fill in a bunch of these negatives on. Uh, on this board. And I still have negatives to fill on Baffin. I forgot about this, too. Baffin still has a couple negatives hanging out uh, that I can fill in. Uh, again, having negatives at the end of the game is also something you shouldn't get too paranoid about. Um, it, it's, it's one of those things, right? Like, completely trying to close off all your negatives is not that important. You can take negative points in a game. It's, it's not that efficient to worry about killing all of your negatives. Uh, you should certainly be trying to, like, minimize negatives, but... It's okay to have a few. I'm probably going to leave a couple negatives hanging out in this house, uh, a couple other things. I mean, we'll see, but it's 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 just not a problem to have a handful of negatives. Um, we feast on this stuff. Uh, we have a hilarious, yeah, 34 silver. That feels great. Uh, there's no more bonuses. I mean, I could try to unlock this bonus, but I just don't really need it. All these bonuses, I think I'm paying too much for in order to get them. So th there is a chance that I should have taken this board in round five. I might have been able to take this board in round five and like fill this in round five and not gone for the home board strategy. Uh one thing you can do in this game is you don't have to fill your home board. You can go for like just two income on your home board and then just fill in the negatives at the end. Uh, every income that you like cover up isn't like you, you get a lot less income. So I, I think filling the home board is still going to be worth it to me because I'm getting so many extra points in silver. But uh, yeah, it's possible that uh, I could have done even better by just pushing for more exploration boards. But. Regardless, I'm pretty confident I'm winning this game. Even though I'm not that many points ahead at the moment, I think I just have more points coming than my opponents in the final round. Uh, just like looking at their stuff, I have so much more stuff than they do, and I'm still going to mostly fill all my stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty confident I'm cruising to a big win here. I mean, to be fair, I am like 40, 50 points up anyhow. Um, and then I... Well, some of my opponents have a lot of goods. Actually, this is kind of a mess. This guy has quite a few stuff he wants to upgrade also. Uh, the most important action on this board for me might be to just take this two upgrade action that only costs one Viking. Uh, yeah, just turning these two green is very important to filling in my board. The edge of my board here is awkward too. There's a lot of green tiles at the edge of my board. So it's a little tricky to fit everything in, uh, but it won't be too bad. 
we'll we'll definitely make do. We got a lot of we got so many. We also have so much ore, and we can spend some silver to fill in holes. Uh, still, so it'll be fine. Uh, we definitely don't have enough stuff for another long house, though. The when I said when I said that other long house plan, that uh, that was obviously nonsense. Uh, it turns out that's clearly not actually happening. Um, possibly emigrating again this round, throwing another board into emigration could work. Uh, we might do that. Oh, I do forget I have this fisherman occupation. We can get a fish for every whaling boat we have. We can just buy two more whaling boats and get three fish from this thing. So that actually does make it a little more conceivable. We could try to get another longhouse. A longhouse costs three Vikings and two stone. We might go for another longhouse yet. Because we do have quite a few actions, and this crown fills up a pretty absurd amount of area. Uh, it won't let me pretend that I have these. Well, that's sh a shame. This goes roughly here. This goes roughly here. Okay, we definitely need a few more tiles, though. So we need we need to try to pillage, maybe try to snare again, finally. We have a decent number of weapons. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Blue is the one that asked for people to go fast because it's 2 a.m. and he's the one that's nearly timing out. Oh, he's taking our action, though. He found the action we wanted. Boo. Actual competition. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, I do need to take an upgrade action, but I can do it later. I'm going to try to snare first, just get some more tiles. Uh, hey, we're great snares. Perfect. Now I will upgrade, probably. Um, yeah. Yeah, spend a couple actions upgrading here is our next step. Then possibly possible longhouse, possible emigration. Um yeah, I think that's I think that's how we're gonna finish our game out. Um should be good. Again, I mean this looks like a this looks this looks like a looks like a very clear, easy win here. Um but again, it, that shouldn't be shocking, right? I mean, this is the one that, like, there's a lot of beginners. There's people that are going to learn this game. There's people that just haven't played much. Like, it's going to take a while for people to learn how to be very good. And I have an advantage of having played and thought and done a lot. I've There's a couple strategy guides on Board Game Geek I've posted in the past. I discussed a lot with other players when this game first came out. Um, it was a thing I kind of got a little obsessed with. Uh, Again, the solo game is actually quite good. I might I might do a solo game stream someday too because that's one of the big upshots of this game actually is like you, you can actually learn how to play quite well by playing the solo game. Um, yeah, you don't get blocked by opponents as much, but the blocking of this game is a lot more like passive than Agricola, which is the other reason I don't love it quite as much because like you saw, oh no, I, basically like my reaction to anybody taking an action I want is for the most part to shrug my shoulders. Like it just doesn't really matter. There's usually something else you can do that's about equivalent. Um, we're going to upgrade these three tiles. Uh, yeah, we could have upgraded the hide, but the reason I'm not upgrading the hide is because I think I want to finally show off what an overseas trade looks like. And an overseas trade lets you upgrade any number of dissimilar green goods. So having dissimilar green goods here to upgrade, uh, I can turn these four green goods to blue. It does cost me a silver, but I'm pretty sure that's what I'm about to do. No complaint about start players. Yeah, I, I mean, against stronger players, I think the exploration boards can get pretty competitive, especially like Baffin Island first becomes available in round four if nobody takes Faro. But the backside of Baffin, like the front side rather, of, of Baffin is Faro Islands, and Faro is trash. It's very bad. It's very hard to use well. I can talk about that on some future stream, but I expect in most like strong player games, Faro was going to flip to Baffin. I think positioning yourself to take Baffin might be like the most like critical thing we're going to see in a Feast for Odin. And that flip could be a little annoying in some games, I think, uh, if somebody gets to take Baffin in front of you. The other thing that's annoying in four player games is that the turn order is solely fixed on who takes the most actions. So even if you take the second most actions, you can still wind up going fourth next round because if the person, like, there's no variable turn order. Um, it's possible after we play this more, 
that we might have to petition the publisher to make variable turn order a thing, especially because on BGA, I mean, it'd be super easy to implement variable turn order. Um, it's a little more, I kind of understand why they didn't do it in person. Like variable turn order is annoying to handle at a table, right? Just having people go clockwise is so ingrained in us. And there's a lot of actions in a Feast for Odin, like trying to track whose turn it is through variable turn order can be pretty annoying uh, in real life. But yeah, those are just some of my thoughts. Uh, anyhow, uh, what was I up to? Uh, oh, I was going to finally show off overseas trading. Uh, so in order to overseas trade, you need a NAR. Uh, we have enough silver that we're going to buy ourselves a NAR. Boom, there we go. We spent five silver. Because the NAR is worth five points, we don't really care that we spent five points to get five points, and now we have access to an action we couldn't otherwise take. We get to upgrade any number of dissimilar green goods. We have four different green goods. We get to upgrade all of them into blue. It's pretty good. Um, you don't want to overseas trade too much because it's totally fine to put some green goods on your boards, obviously. Um, like, I think some people focus a little too much on getting their tiles to be blue, Whereas, like, you can see I have quite a bit of green on a lot of my boards, and that's that's fine. You're, you're not spending actions upgrading, so you save yourself actions, you know, the more green stuff that you can handle. But uh, doing a couple overseas tradings just to make it easier to fit stuff, solid enough, solid enough. Uh, what am I doing now? I have a lot of actions, and I think my board, well, I can still earn some more tiles, right? Well, there's not many upgrade actions left. That's kind of the big deal. Uh, uh, there is this crafting action. If I had one more wood, uh, I could try to go get a wood. Uh, actually, I basically can't get wood. Wow. Uh, okay. Um, I might go hunting. If I succeed at hunting, the good news is I get some good tiles. If I fail at hunting, I get the one wood, and then I could go craft some more tiles to fill in boards. That's a decent sequence. Uh, I could finally spend this flax for a green thing. It turns out I should have done that and then overseas traded is what actually should have happened. But it might be okay to do that. Uh, Blue is trying to time out, uh, despite, again, being the guy that wanted us to move fast. Uh, I, I mean, whatever. This game is complicated and long. But uh, if we get kicked here instead of finishing it out, like if somebody's going to kick him, that's going to be very annoying. Hopefully he just plays his turn fast, but he's... He's clicked the button once to think a little before playing his next move. I mean, I guess I'm happy that he clicked a button, but uh, you're over time, buddy. Like, you, you don't get to think. That's, that's kind of how this works. Uh, but whatever. It's fine. I'll, I can survive. Uh, I am going to try this hunting line. Uh... I might succeed at hunting, which is great. If I fail at hunting, it turns out I also have a good backup for the wood. Uh, but I think I will just spend to succeed. Uh, I would have to upgrade this guy, but I think I'm willing to upgrade this guy. Uh, I would get a ore while upgrading. So, yeah, actually, this is this is actually pretty slick. I have I have a slick I have some slick things I can do on this board uh, because this mountain strip is so lucrative. I can try to get all of the goods off of here. I mean, these goods are just six points, right? Because they can just directly go on boards. Um, so what I can do is I can take these two actions for six points and two upgrades. Uh, I take this. I upgrade this to green. I confirm. And then, yeah, my ac next action is to take this just because... Even a five-point action for two Vikings is pretty good at this point. And then I can also just turn this blue... I don't need it blue, but it'll make puzzling ridiculously easy. Um, I still, oh, I also can still pillage again. God, I forgot I can pillage again. Like, there's a couple decent space filling tiles still. So I probably do that. I spend a stone for this. I might wind up with, no, I can't wind up with too many goods here, though. It's, it's like virtually impossible for me to have too much stuff. 
just because, yeah, I have so many negatives I can cover, which is a good thing because the most efficient actions in this game are basically earning tiles in order to fill spaces. Uh, and so that's part of why my strategy here of just making sure that I can keep filling spaces with tiles is going to win. It's kind of hard to get points otherwise. Like, I again, I could I could emigrate still, but that's not that great of points. I could still whatever, but not that great of points. So uh, I can't turn my flax into a green thingy, by the way. Uh, this action got taken, but uh, what was I doing? Yeah, I'm doing this because this is zany. Getting all these things off the mountain strip is great. And then, sure, this can be blue. I'm overdoing it on the blue a little. Oh, nobody else has actions. Wow, uh, I have three actions left. What did I say I wanted to do to finish this game? Oh, I was just going to earn more goods. Sure, a stone to this is fine. And then pillage, yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Getting to pillage every round is absolutely nuts. I should not have been allowed to pillage every round. Uh, yeah, this 11 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spaces. This is 12. I'm just going to spend two stone here and take this. Um... Yeah. All right. Putting goods on our boards. Now we just dump things as best we can. Uh, we put giant stuff out. Uh, we put these. Ugh. I, I kind of. The one thing that's a little rough about this game is the really small tiles. Grabbing them. Sometimes they rotate instead of uh, giving them. But yeah. Anyhow. Uh. We are just trying to fill in everything. All right, it turns out we actually have very little extra stuff here. Uh, oh, awkward. Uh, oh, wait, no, here we go. Here we go. Rotate that there, rotate that. Uh, can I even put this anywhere or do I need to, oh yeah, okay, I need to actually change things up. I need, I need these small things for other boards, obviously. Small things for other boards, big tiles on this board. Uh, do, do, do. There we go, that's full. We throw this guy, this guy here for five points. Uh, and then we have this guy for two points, this guy for two points, and this guy is two points here. And then we still have three ore. We better spend the ore it's just covering up points. This is clearly the stage of the game where yeah, you're like, <laughs> it's it's fortunate I have enough turns, but okay, we're doing all that before income. Yeah, I'm good. Put things on our board for the feast. May as well feast on big stuff like this. And then uh, we still need to go cover this stuff. All right, we throw that like that. That's probably as good as it's going to get. Done. Uh, 151. Uh, I will accept a 151. 151 is very good. Very, very good game. For, uh, obviously, so yeah, I can't complain. We gained 45 ELO. Our quest for the number one badge begins. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yellow, yellow didn't score very well, but they did also have these seven, uh, beggars that they accidentally took. Um, so yeah, I, it does turn out that orange here, orange, orange, at least in their first game, filled their board, you know, so, but yeah, thanks for the stream. Educational seems a lot less varied and dynamic than Agricola. Yeah, it's, it's. It's definite. It's still interesting, and you still can kind of execute some things. But yeah, it's 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 not as good. Uh, all of our opponents did avoid a lot of negatives. I'll I'll give this. These guys these guys made sure not to get negatives. But uh, it doesn't matter that I have some negatives here. I just have so many more points. I should really find the score sheet. Yeah, here's the score sheet. 
So the score sheet, ship count. Uh, I have about as many ships as my opponent. Well, actually, Hardenbard went this whole game without ships. That's even more impressive, actually. Running a shipless game is uh, pretty hard in a Feast for Odin. Like, so many of the actions are, like, behind ships. Uh, but, yeah. It's less punishing. Yeah, there's less ways to get punished. Uh, but, yeah. Anyhow, yeah, our game, we actually got an emigration. None of our opponents got an emigration. We got all the... We have a bunch of points and exploration boards. We have a shed. We just have an insane amount of silver left at the end of the game. 67 points just in our silver. That's all that income we were earning. And so who cares that, yes, we left some negatives on our boards. We have 15 negatives. Oh, no. Um, still just just too many points in too many areas. Uh, trying to earn points in this game via animals is a big trap. All of, I, all, all of you, I will advise you of that. Uh, I obviously did nothing with animals this game, but if you do stuff with animals and try to breed animals, you want to upgrade animals and put them on your boards. It's more efficient. The, the direct animal points is a complete and utter trap. Um, occupations. It was very sad. Uh, this game, yeah, I scored a 151 this game, and the only occupation I played, the only reason I played it was because it was three points and I wanted that action space anyhow. So, again, this is kind of the lame thing about A Feast for Odin in terms of... I just had a really good game and I cared not at all what occupations I drew. I didn't like, it didn't matter. I didn't work them in. And that's, I agree. That's also why this game is like quite a bit less replayable. Uh, the occupations aren't strong enough to really direct your strategy. Um, I could have tried to leverage them a little more. And to be fair, I might've done a little better had I done so you still can get benefits from your occupations. But yeah, they're they're a little bit more supplementary. At strong tables, to be fair, you also don't get away with that. And I got away with this game. You don't get to just take all the best actions every round, especially in four player. And then it becomes a little more important to work occupations into your strategy too, I think. Uh, so on some level, I think the game gets a little better as you get, uh, you know, a bit more competition, a bit more players, every, everybody understanding what to actually compete and contest. Uh, but yeah. Uh, why is starvation called a thing penalty? Um, yeah, the reason it's called a thing penalty is I believe it's just, or actually, I don't know for sure, but part of the reason is because those penalties you can get for other reasons. This is obviously not applicable in the online version, but in real life, it's not inconceivable to imagine as you're playing the game that all of a sudden you look at somebody's board or they look closer and they accidentally have two green goods touching each other. Uh, in those cases, you're supposed to take a negative, you're, you're supposed to take a thing penalty. Um, so they're, they're kind of like multi-purpose penalties. Um, but obviously on, in the online implementation, there's no possible way you're ever going to get a penalty for, dis like goods touching whether or not allowed to because the game won't let you so uh i don't know we could just call them beggars in the online version but uh yeah and then there is something about thing i mean uh, to be fair obviously if here i just keep calling them green goods and whatever like there's technically names behind all this a feast for odin has a kind of a cool almanac that like actually covers the historical aspects of what the Vikings did and what they used all these various goods for and why all the goods are called what they are. Like every single one of these, oops, every single one of these tiles in the game has a name. You'll notice like I occasionally call this flax. Like this is peas, flax, beans, grain, cabbage, fruit, mead, fish, milk, salt meats, game meat, sheep, whale meat, cattle, Oil, hide, wool, linen, skin and bones. This is why I wasn't sure if this is hide. This is hide or this is hide. And the other one is skin, I think. No, I don't even know what it. No, pelt. This is pelt. This is, yeah, yeah. Hide, pelt. Uh, I don't remember the difference between these two clothing shirt i don't yeah whatever anyhow they they all have they all have uh they all have names there's there's a bunch of like lore and stuff it's it's actually kind of cool but any of these games that tries a little too hard on the theme right like 
we're also just playing a game. I don't know. Like, it's kind of nice that they did a lot of theme and they did a lot of background and there's all the historical reasons of why the Vikings explored the various exploration boards and stuff too, but yeah. Anyhow, an accidental cheating penalty for ir in real life? Yeah, that is, yeah. But yeah, uh, it's cool that they have lore and all, but it's kind of hilarious to justify why you're using them to fill your board. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like, the rule book has, like, slight arguments of, like, you're trying to become the Viking that fills your lands with the best treasures and the best, like, things, but it, it's a stretch. Exactly, right? Like, you're trying to find the dumbest theming for... Also, like, why green goods can't touch other green goods and why on your houses orange and red goods can't... Like, they have to be separated. It's, it's a big stretch, exactly. Like, it's... It, it's it's cool that they went into a bunch of depth, but it's also like at some level, guys, it's okay. It's a game. You're allowed. You're allowed to just say, "Hey, it's a game," and we did. <laughs> we we gave it. We gave it a theme that we could. <laughs> but whatever, it's fine. Uh, anyhow, uh, hopefully that was enjoyable. Hopefully there was some good learning. We definitely covered a lot of the rules. Uh, we covered most of the action spaces. The main things that I didn't cover that I guess I'll kind of cover here at the end. Again, the top line is. You build different houses, you build different sheds, you build different boats, you build houses and sheds. Here we have our hunting, our snaring, and our whaling actions. Those all make enough sense. The market is kind of what I skipped. This is how you actually get animals. And then at the end of each round, uh, there's a breeding phase. If you have a pair of sheep or a pair of cows, the way breeding works in this game is sadly you don't instantly get another sheep or another cow. You instead flip a sheep so it becomes pregnant, or you flip a cow so it becomes pregnant. You can now use the other animal to do whatever you want, and then in the next breeding phase, the pregnant animal will give you two animals. Uh, you'll, you'll flip the pregnant back to regular and get a new animal. So essentially, breeding gives you a new animal every other round, is the way breeding works in this game. Uh, and that makes it a little slow. It's a little hard to work. Um... It also costs money to buy the animals, so it's a little hard early to get the breeding going, which is all why it's a little bit of a tough strategy, but I'll do it someday. But uh, that's a lot of why I ignored most of these spaces. Uh, another thing that I ignored most of are all these kind of goods and market actions. All of these tend to be fairly inefficient, or like this one is efficient if you're breeding both types of animals. So like if you already have a cow and a sheep, it's okay to use this space, but like it's a really a niche thing. So if you have a lot of animals, these are fine. The crafting spaces are fairly good. Crafting stuff into things works. Uh, all of these upgrade and mountain stuff, we kind of covered what all those do for the most part. Uh, if you hover over any space, it kind of tells you what they do too when you try to play. Uh, we did a little bit of the overseas trading. We never did this. You can buy the silver goods I was raiding and pillaging. They all have a money cost on them. Uh, and so, yeah, if you have a NAR, you can spend three Vikings and a bunch of silver and you can uh, buy stuff. So that's that's a space I didn't cover. Uh, otherwise, raiding and pillaging. Uh, exploration is important. Emigration is here. And then the other thing I didn't do anything with, but these spaces allow you to play or draw more occupations. They can be solid if you actually wanted to play or use cards, but I obviously didn't do that. So, uh Finally, because there are so many action spaces, uh, after you start playing and you want to learn and you're looking for strategy advice, uh, the main Board Game Geek thread I have is a pretty cool article. Uh, I can't remember the exact name. I'll find it someday. But essentially, it's a strategy guide that covers how good each space is. So I cover like all 60 action spaces and kind of rank them up, you know, star based of like how strong is it? How often should you take it, etc.? Uh, but the shortcut is essentially these die roll actions, I think, are quite good. Exploration is very important. Uh, some of the upgrade spots can be pretty good then, too. Uh, mostly, you want to avoid these kind of market actions. They're pretty bad. This combined build house, build boat space is very strong. Uh, 
building boats is kind of inefficient. It's good early just because boats are important, but later in the game, it's often more efficient just to buy boats as long as you've set up good income, which is obviously what I did this game. So I think those are my those are my tips for everybody trying to get going. So yeah. Anyhow, this made you want to play? Yeah, cool. Well, I'm glad. Uh, it does look like online with new players, you're probably settling in for 30 to 40 minutes of players still. I'll be curious to see how it goes long term, but yeah, it's it is admittedly a little tricky to play this very fast. I mean, I was able to do it. I know what I'm doing. And I took a while. I mean, these guys weren't that long. But yeah, it could be, I could easily see these games going 40, 45 minutes a player with some slower players. So there's also, it is a, it is a bit of a longer one. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I probably will do another stream or two of this at some point. Um, maybe tomorrow morning, maybe Sunday morning type stuff. Um, I'm going to try to play a decent bit in these early weeks just because this is the best time to get uh, ELO badges before some like two player specialist grinds out a hundred games and hits the top of the leaderboard. Uh, the early leaderboards tend to be pretty volatile. So I sillily would like some sort of ELO badge in this game also perhaps, but we'll see how much fun I have. Keep playing the same thing. Cause I suspect against new players, I'm going to be able to just do a lot of pillaging and a lot of take uh, Iceland type stuff. Uh, and that could get sick, but uh, we'll see. Anyhow, it was fun. Uh, thanks all for hanging out and chatting. Um, I don't, Lumen normally streams Agricola at some point today, but it doesn't look like he's on yet. Um, so hopefully that happens. Otherwise, I might yet stream an Agricola game also this afternoon in a little bit uh, after I like walk Loki and get a snack. Uh, we'll see. Uh, otherwise, there's a Fire 2 open game tomorrow. Uh, that'll be cool to check out. My Fire 2 open game is next Wednesday. I maybe should do like a practice game again. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's all I know for now. But, yeah, thanks all for hanging out. Thanks all who enjoyed this video. As usual, if you do have certain content or specific questions or you want to know anything, uh, feel free to, like, message or reach out. I can try to talk about specific stuff. I can go back to streaming Agricola only uh, or Terra Mystica someday, or I can keep adding some more Feast for Odin if people want. Just uh, It's a little bit of what I want to do, too. But, yeah, always curious and some feedback from others, too, if there's specifics you're looking for. But uh, for now, going to head off. I will see everybody around later.